Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I wanted to go over the arena event. I haven't covered strategy for this in a specific video for quite some time, and while the previous video I have covered on it a couple years back is still 100% relevant because arena has not really changed that much, I still wanted to kind of go over it again, just general strategy and how to build teams and stuff, as uh, you can't just like simply put in a team, since it is a drafting system, as well as kind of go over why you would even want to do arena in the first place. It is generally considered one of the worst uh, arena events, or one of the worst weekend events in the entire game. However, it also has a daily system attached to it that, while generally skipped by most people, isn't actually too bad, depending on what you're looking for at a given moment in time. So first, let's go over why on earth you'd even want to do this mode before we start going over strategy. So arena mode is probably the most not done mode or weekend related mode in the entire game. It starts off, uh, as far as the main rewards, you generally cycle through all of them once when you have this three-day system. Uh, basically, if you get a full wipe, you end up getting uh, 50 points and and then you end up getting things like three gem keys, two event keys, uh, like 10 diamonds or an equivalent of such, enough to craft like half a scroll, and a random standard orb. So overall, loot's pretty bad in that regard, though there are a few secondary loots to this game mode that are pretty decent. Uh, for example, if you can win decently quick, uh, the amount of trophies is pretty comparable to that of using Phoenicia on Explore 5, 6, or 7, or something similar, uh, which generally nets about eight trophies uh, per uh, minute. And uh, if you can win very quickly in Arena, um, you can actually end up getting uh, rates that are pretty similar to that by running the arena event. Uh, it's also a good way to get souls very early on in the game when you lack uh, many other options as it gives a pretty good uh, handful. However, the biggest reward though from doing this game mode is every single time, uh, three times per day, um, you can uh, even when there's not an arena event, but three times per day, you can end up claiming the reward for basically an extra offer roll. It will never roll in the VIP ones if you happen to have them unlocked, yeah, even then it won't roll for them, but it will roll for some of the standard ones. And while a lot of stuff in standard is isn't too good. Uh, it does roll it at a 10% discount, and there are a few that are pretty decent. <clears throat> These include things like an Imperial, uh, the big horde of keys that ends up uh, costing 400, which would then be 360. Uh, that ends up giving a bunch of gem keys and event keys are pretty good value if you're still in the position where you need event keys. And uh, whatever you happen to have at a moment that might be useful. For example, kingdom offers can end up appearing there. So right now, uh, as an example, I currently have White Helm requiring a third level 20 pet. And off that, we would be able to do uh, get sacred clubs or cubs, I mean. So whenever we go and get an offer there, there's a small chance we'll end up getting this pet. And the pet offer is among one of the better ones, as you get it for about half as cheap as if you did it through a pet event. <clears throat> Plus, you end up getting some pet food with it as well. So overall, pretty good uh, value if you end up seeing it. So there are a few small handful of them. There's even a war coin, so it's one of the only few alternative ways to be able to get more war coins or war bands. I mean, well, war coins for war bands. Um, so if you haven't gotten all these banners yet, you can end up getting progress on that as there really isn't any other way other than money to speed that up other than doing your three daily arena. So it has a few very, very niche purposes, but uh, overall is a little underwhelming in the loot category. However, one thing that this mode does have going for it <coughs> is how unique the gameplay is compared to most rest of the game. So uh, this is actually really reminiscent of how the game used to be, like pretty much when it launched like six, seven years ago. Uh, as stats are way, way lower, everything's capped off at uh, 15 and and uh, you don't have any traits or anything, so you're using a lot more of the boost ratios uh, when you're composing a team, as well as just trying to get uh, like auto win high damage options. So let's start going over some of the things that can actually end up doing damage. Like for example, this team right here that we already have is a win. So. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to basically do a bunch of uh, drafts here, just kind of show like how you would uh, go about it process-wise and uh, go from there, um, as well as show the loot for uh, this one right here, just to kind of show on the uh, loot side of things for when you get a completion. Uh, one other side thing I probably should go over real, real quick before we uh, do do that, though. Uh, there is one slightly pay-to-win win that you can actually get here uh, that does speed it up. If you spend at least, I believe, 70 or $80 on the game, you actually make Arena even easier to do because it gives you one starting win, making it so you only need five instead of six. You definitely do not need this. This to participate in an arena event. However, it does make it slightly more enticing. I wish it wasn't paywalled. I wish it just naturally required only five. Um, however, um, you do get that little bit extra bonus if you happen to be at that point. So worth mentioning. Um, also worth mentioning the inverse. If you're 100% free to play, arena is definitely less worthwhile uh, because of that. But anyways, so our initial team right here. So this was just one I did uh, right before we started up this video, just to kind of have one already done, to have already have a uh, team, so we can just go straight into it before we start doing some draft examples. But anyways, um, as far as this composition, uh, of course, you uh, the current state of Arena, 
You start by drafting from epic down to common. Uh, it was changed twice in the past. Uh, back in the day, you used to be able to get a hero weapon that you could choose anything, and you would draft a common, rare, and ultra rare in that order. Then it was changed, so you craft, uh, you uh, they dropped the weapon, but you would uh, then draft from common to epic, uh, meaning going from lowest rarity to highest rarity. But in the current state of the game, you actually draft from highest rarity to lowest rarity. You also get one free reroll, and this makes it pretty easy because you can actually start from your main component on your team. So you're going to be starting from your epic draft, and you can kind of start building from there. So right here we kind of just didn't have too many options so we went for just a nice little damage poke uh, while having a bit of explosion uh anything that has any amount of board clear and man accumulation generally a very good idea anything that even has a little hint of extra turn potential and as you would notice with uh, this entire team every single thing on this actually can uh from here we were kind of just looking to see if we could get anything that was even remotely good on ultra rare as generally what you want to do with your epic and ultra rare picks is find something that can auto win for you unfortunately we were not able to get this and simply you had to go with something like a snow guardian uh, we end up getting a damage poke to synergize with our damage poke it also gets a freeze which isn't too relevant in arena but it still stops some turns here and there however the most useful thing is whenever it gets a kill it creates a bunch of blue obviously from drafting this we would hope that one of our other two picks were blue which obviously did not happen however it is fine if you don't necessarily cover the color that you end up creating for uh, if it's something that can net you extra turn so this is pretty much always going to net us an extra turn whenever we end up uh, getting a kill so that's one of the more of the bigger reasons why we end up picking it more so than even getting the blue man accumulation itself at this point we were very uh pressed for a tank uh because we had uh, two 10 attacks and generally how stats work in this game in uh, gems of war is the higher your attack the lower your over hp and armor durability this isn't too big a deal for higher rarity stuff as they naturally have bulkier higher stats however it is still relevant to be able to uh have at least one tank on your team and we were able to do this with summer night uh, one thing pretty noteworthy to end up mentioning that actually does change up from week to week if you're doing uh, arena on a regular basis if you are doing the three dailies is the bonuses that you have on a given week, like this week being 10% uh, to Fey and 10% to Bright Forest, does actually apply in Arena. No other stats at all, no Kingdom upgrades, no other anythings apply in Arena. Uh, actually, Mana Surge Chance does. So Mana Surge Chance and uh, these are the only two that actually does. So uh, this can be utilized. So we end up seeing a Summer Night, which this particular week has a 20% extra bonus. And uh, this is pretty useful because this actually makes her from an okay tank that you generally wouldn't draft to probably the best thing on our entire team on this given draft and pretty much our auto win option that helped us carry us through so ends up destroying a row which once again board control you need that in order to be able to maintain your turns it's a lot of mana accumulation also anytime something says destroy really good because it actually gives you 100% of the mana and when you're dealing with lower mana cost stuff in arena anytime you can get a destroy ability with board control is very very strong and uh, worth utilizing so right here we end up gaining a bunch of armor and attack however the uh, boost by red uh, so boost ratios um, really insanely important in Arena. Arena, a lot of boost ratios aren't really balanced too well for Arena. Um, most of them are balanced, I would say, more so to like early game, mid game, but not necessarily for Arena. So some of them can be pretty broken. In this particular instance, if we even hit just three red, we're going to be hitting a total of 10 uh, because those three red will become six additional stats, and then we're getting uh, 10 total armor and attack. And on top of that, gains barrier. Uh, barrier, you can just kind of keep spamming, similar to just a normal gameplay uh, when you use like something like a Titan or any barrier on Brown Hero class, where you just keep basically basically tanking indefinitely. So it can end up being pretty well while also gaining offense and defense simultaneously. So that was basically the whole setup and we just kind of had a rock worm at the end. Uh, we didn't have any blue option, which of course would have been nicer if we saw a good blue, but this was mostly for brown man, <coughs> man accumulation. Uh, we didn't really have another way to really man accumulate, so I figured we'd go for this and just kind of get them rolling. It also helps poke into Snow Guardian range and stuff like that. But anyways, let's claim the loot here. So whenever we end up claiming the loot during one of these events, uh, we will get uh, Valor, as I kind of mentioned earlier. Uh, you get 50 every single time you get a 6 win in uh, Arena. That also includes a 6 win with 1 loss. As long as you don't double loss, it'll still give you the full amounts of uh, Valor. And this ends up uh, counting towards the uh, actual game mode. So like right here, I think we got the 3 gem key drop. Uh, as I mentioned, the trophies are pretty nice. The glory keys are pretty much irrelevant. These souls are kind of low later in the game, like seeing this many souls. Um, I guess even compared to Anoma Palooza, it's a pretty small amount of souls. However, if you're first starting off, it's definitely not like super bad, uh, the amount, as you don't have too many ways other than when uh, when the events end up coming around, like uh, vault events, to be able to like power farm on souls. And it gives you a little bit of gold, though, pretty incompetent amount compared to uh, other options. So it's mostly just for the valor for the event and for a little bit of trophies, as well as this right here. So whenever we click continue here, it'll give us any of those offers and tells you how many more you have for today. This can be done at any point, not just during arena events. 
events. This can be done literally every day if you wanted to or whenever you feel like it. And uh, you get three of them per day, uh, as indicated by the two out of three, meaning we got one right here and then we still have two more. Uh, a lot of these aren't worth it, though. Like right here, you're better off just, uh, of course, going for your uh, arena, not your arena, your dungeon. So uh, these are really bad whenever it gives those uh, amount of crafting material. Highly advise missing or skipping over all of them uh, because if you just simply go to, so uh, not Soul Forge, if you simply go to um, dungeon and you click over to offers for 50 gems, uh, which normally this is 50 gems. I haven't done the first battle yet, but for 50 gems, you can end up getting almost more resources than that just for 50 gems. And if you do it twice or, you know, two days in a row, you're already bypassing that much uh, or, you know, exceeding it for only 100 gems instead of 270 or 300. Um, so it is definitely advised never buying any of those crafting materials um, and just simply getting them through the daily dungeons if you're going to be getting them. But anyways, let's go over just some draft picks for Arena. And just kind of show. And as you can see here, we're just getting shards. That's enough for 10 diamonds. Then it goes to two event keys. Then it goes to basically half of a deed uh, with how many writs it gives. And then it goes an orb. And you generally don't want to go past one cycle for the rewards just because uh, the return on um, investment is very bad for time relative to what you get in return. But anyways, let's go to the core part of this video now that we're like 10 minutes in. And that is how to draft in Arena. <laughs> so uh, as far as uh, drafting is uh, concerned, uh, we generally want our ultra or our epic pick to end up being the core part of our team. So there are a couple different ways that we can end up doing this. We can go for something with really high attack and want to put it as our first slot. We can go for something that's absurdly good at man accumulating and just hope we get something else that is good in a different category. Or we can try hoping for an insta kill. In this particular instance, we don't really have any good option here. We have an okay like man accumulator uh, summoner here that's really good at not losing, though not necessarily going to be that good for anything else. So I guess we can kind of draft that and kind of see where things go. Uh, he's ended up going to creating a bunch of blue and brown for us while pretty much having enough summons to make sure we never die in this particular situation. So we will end up taking it and keeping in mind that he can end up creating blue and brown, which means a lot of our drafts going forward are going to want to be blue and brown based. We did get another man accumulator here. However, given that we just got a core man accumulator, we probably don't want to take that if we can help it uh, as we're going to want our ultra rare here to kind of be our damage source. So with other, these other two options, we pretty much only have one real damage source here, which does a bunch of damage to an enemy and he ends up doing some damage to himself but ends up gaining some attack. This isn't too bad as we do have a resummon option. Normally something like this that damages itself and gains stats in arena you'd want to put in second slot because you wouldn't want to put it in the first because it might end up killing itself off but it, if you put it into second it gives us some time to buff up so you can end up um, getting a bit of boost. So at this point we kind of just need something that sacrifices itself where there are a few options that can end up doing so as well as if as our first slot as well as something kind of to uh, back it up with a high attack uh, either berserker itself or or something like this pixie here, uh, which is a single target fairy fire. It helps cover colors that we don't currently use and definitely seems pretty tempting. As I mentioned before, uh, the 10%, 20% stats do uh, affect arena on the given week. And uh, given that this has 20% stats, uh, it is definitely worth considering. Uh, so right here, uh, we either for our final pick want to cover, um, in this particular team, we kind of want something that can sacrifice itself out or die pretty quickly if we're going to put something in first, or we could do some kind of support option. Uh, however, uh, you generally do want to cover every single color when you can. So right here, we're actually going to want to go for a brown uh, pick. So this either leads us to either going North Render or uh, Mammoth. Uh, North Render is kind of interesting because it has some synergy here. Um, there's a couple things I can end up doing. Gaining attacks to synergize with that. It would make our Fairy Fire kind of useless, though. Though we don't necessarily have to use every mechanic that we have on our team. Uh, that is definitely not required in any given situation. Uh, even the Skeleton is almost seeming useful. So one actual... There's basically two ways that we could draft this, depending on how we want to go. Uh, the first is going either Mammoth and uh, Northrender, which then would allow us to go... Oh, you can't adjust these during this screen? Which would then allow us to go something like a Pixie in first slot, with its 10 attack, to have that super high attack there. Uh, we then probably want to have it followed up by if we're going Mammoth, uh, we'd probably want to go Berserker in second. If we're going Northrender, we'd probably want to go Northrender in second. And uh, there's actually a third strategy here. Skeleton actually isn't bad because we're most likely going to be putting Pixie in first slot regardless due to its really high base attack and the fact that it can die decently quick and the fact that we're probably not really using its Fairy Fire. Uh, we can end up going all in on the Skull Route. So we're already going to have something that has a good base attack. Uh, this has extra uh, Skulls and I, I kind of want to just do it this way. So what we can end up doing with this 
Uh, and you can also re-roll this if you don't want it. However, we are going to say yes, just so we can kind of show the order here. So we can end up putting Pixie in first slot. This will then allow us to do the Berserker thing that I mentioned. Um, you generally want to put Berserker and other similar things that scale over time in second slot if you can. If they're a really tanky one that gains barrier and stuff, they can go in first. But if it's something that doesn't necessarily gain durability, or in this case quite literally hurts itself, um, you kind of want to put them in second just to make sure they have some time to buff. So by the time he is first slot, he's going to be like 20-ish durability with... Um, something like a like you know double digit attack so he'll be able to hit for approximately 16 or so depending on how far you get with him and um still be able to hit pretty hard while still having a decent enough durability whereas if you put him in first slot he might just eventually kill himself out off his own damage that he does to himself uh we have sir quentin uh, or sir um Gwen here which will end up being a bunch of blue and brown uh we don't end up, end up utilizing the brown at all in this team unfortunately uh which of course we could do with either of the two brown picks that we did have an option to however we are primarily using him for his uh resummon capability uh, because uh, Pixie's gonna die, Berserker hurts itself, so it has potential to die. So he's mostly just our backup plan to make sure we don't end up losing. Uh, this is potentially a draft where if you wanted, like, absolute speed, it is potentially worth maybe skipping on it. However, um, it seems perfectly fine. And you know what? We're actually gonna do a battle for some of these just to kind of show how they'll go end up going down. So what we're mostly gonna want to do here is utilize the Pixie damage. Uh, we're mostly looking to grab as many um, blue and red, oddly enough. Uh, we don't really care about too many other colors. It's mostly just blue and uh, red. Uh, the main reason for this is how our damage setup currently is. Uh, as I mentioned, we want to scale his attack so that he can actually get uh, rolling here. Uh, we can see that he is a 7 to 14, so we can kind of guesstimate like what we kind of want to double kill or if we just want to proc something down. So there we did get max roll. Uh, we're mostly just looking to try to get the last little bit of kill on this thing. So once again, we'll keep taking blue and red, every single one we could possibly get. Uh, um, just kind of chipping it down, seeing if he'll give us anything. Unfortunately, he's creating a bunch of brown. We do not utilize it directly. However, we do use it indirectly. We do create brown off of one of our troops, which can end up um, using it for um, extra turn potential, which extra turn potential is still a really relevant aspect uh, to be able to use. So right here, I'm almost tempted just to take a yellow. This might seem like a weird move, given that we already have a cast right now. However, he is a little bit vulnerable. We do want to have that backup resummon. Uh, before we cast it, though, because he does create blue as one of his colors, we do actually want to cast out our ability here. Uh, we do have a pretty high amount of attack. However, I do want to try poking it into kill range. There's a 16 attack I was talking about earlier, and here's the resummon. So he ends up summoning two to four options, who's mostly just going to be holding the line to make sure we don't lose. As you can see there, we got a huge amount of uh, backup, and uh, basically we're not going to lose now, or at least have a pretty good chance of not losing. It's a bit of a slower option to be getting as your epic. You normally want to be getting something a bit more towards the offensive side and not defensive side. Though depending on how your draft goes, like ours just went there, we did have to go for the other option. Um, so right here, we're just going to go for... We could gamble a kill here. I think I actually will, because uh, we only have 7 attack base. Uh, we don't have our super high attack there anymore. Uh, we would actually need to deliberately let our first slot die. So right here, I'm mostly taking blues, because we're now we're blocked on red. Now we're not blocked on anything, so we can end up going for a skull poke. Unfortunately, we don't really have a good option. He's about to do, uh, convert everything that doesn't exist currently on the board, so he's going to do that and do literally nothing. Uh, right here, uh, you may notice, we have enough attack to kill his first slot. So what we actually want to do here is not actually hit his first slot but hit at the other one uh if it was a super big threat we might want to hit it directly however because we have enough damage to kill it in one skull we actually want to leave it alive especially since it doesn't have enough damage to hit us back uh, so we can one-shot it, but he can't one-shot us. So we're actually just going to leave it there, since our ability does not have a range that can kill it. So now we just simply go for the one-shot skull, and any amount of damage that we get here fourth will be enough to go and uh, kill it out. So we'll just simply cast this ability, and that's pretty much the team that we just drafted. So as you can see, perfectly fine to be running through Arena. Uh, anyways, let's go through another mock draft. We'll just go and retire this one. You can retire any time, not really advised, but you get the loot for whatever point you have reached, uh, which normally isn't much. Your most bulk of your loot is when you get a full completion on Arena, as you want to be... if you are doing arena to any capacity you want to go for a full wipe so you can get those three arena offers per day as that is the main thing that you're really looking for whenever you're doing uh, arena events then i guess technically devour while you're doing it but mostly those three per day um rolls are what you're looking for so anyways let's go into another draft here so <clears throat> into our next draft uh, we'll probably just do a few drafts here instead of using them, and then maybe end it on one last one where we do like a mock battle. So right here, um, I can already tell that our options aren't too good. We have a silence with some explosion, but his mana cost is so high that not really going to be able to do much. We can do some damage to the first enemy with a very pitiful boost ratio. Um, 
because uh, the enemy's not going to have that much attack in this kind of context. And um, if he's enraged, he does get to bleed the first enemy twice, which in Arena is not too bad, but he doesn't really have a good way of getting enraged. He normally does if he has traits, but of course there are no traits in Arena, so a lot of abilities like that aren't going to be too good. Based on what we currently have here, I'm actually most interested in getting this. Uh, this almost seems like it's going towards a just reroll option, but he ends up doing some scatter and jumbling. Jumbling just... Um, makes all the enemies go to a different location than where they already are. So right here, we have an auto win, our first auto win that we've seen this entire draft system. So uh, also cats up with 20%, which is potentially worth considering if you, well, you didn't have this here. However, Tome Knight ends up destroying a column, gains a bunch of armor and attack, boosted by yellow gems, and gains barrier. Uh, you may have noticed on the very first thing that we've shown during this, uh, sh uh, this video that we had a kind of similar option uh, with the Summer Knights that ended up doing something pretty similar, except it destroyed a row with slightly less stats and had a slightly lower mana cost at uh, the cost of gaining uh, less stats. However, uh, this one's really good because it has better bulk. Uh, it also doesn't need that 20% stats to really be viable. The other one technically doesn't either. However, this is generally a much better overall option and definitely one of the ones that you normally want to consider. So in a normal situation, if we didn't see the Tome Knight there, we definitely want to go to Cat Sif, put it in first slot, use it as our primary damage source up front. Even if you're going for all in speed, you might want to do it if you don't mind going riskier builds. However, in this particular instance, we are going to draft for the safer side of things. So we are going to end up getting a Tome Knight and ultimately putting it into first slot uh, most likely. So here we have a Mana Drainer. A uh, Mana Drainer can be uh, interesting. Uh, obviously, uh, a lot of things have really low mana cost because we're drafting such low rarities. So you can end up using this to end up uh, lowering them down while still pressuring some damage, which is kind of nice. It also has a very, very, very small chance to uh, devour, which if you even get a single one off in Arena, you're pretty much set for an auto win. Uh, we do have some that have like boost ratio based on life missing, but that's not as good in Arena. We also have an Exploder, which if we really desperately needed a mana accumulator, could be okay. In this particular situation, now that I'm looking at it, we actually probably would want to go that. Even though Kelpie is a better option, I would say, uh, compared to any of these other two. Uh, this is a weird in situation where we actually don't want to draft what the best option is. Uh, the main reason for this is we already have two blues on the team, as well as one blue yellow that we know pretty much for sure we want to put in first slot. You could theoretically put this in second and do like the buff thing where you get it buffed preemptively if you're kind of scared that you might die or if you only have one death left, or you know if you already lost once and you want to be super safe, put your Tome Knight in second slot rather than first. But generally speaking, you're going to be putting in first. Um, and because we know that, uh, Kelpie's going to be full mana blocked and because he's going to be full mana blocked it's going to take a while before he gets going so we're actually going to want to go trickster here um not as good as the other one but it's a okay mana accumulator it also gets to move the first and last slot which actually gives us two different jumbling abilities which you generally don't have uh, this ends up jumbling all the enemy team to different locations and this one jumbles the first and last consistently so we actually know exactly what this one's going to do whereas this one's going to be a bit more unpredictable um so we're going to be casting this one more because we already know this guy's going to be blocked on blue so we're not really using him as much uh in this particular situation we have uh, a couple different options. Uh, Dragon Eggs is probably the safest thing here. It does have zero attack, and you generally do not want to put a zero attack in last slot. If we were to put Dragon Egg down, it would most likely be a third with Ballet in last. So the team would end up being Tome Knight, Trickster. Uh, yeah, Trickster, right? Because you have eight attack. Yeah, that's fine. So the um, team would end up being in order of Tome, Might Tome Knight, uh, Trickster, Ballel, and then the Dragon Egg. However, I kind of want to put Balo in last slot. Um, epics, uh, or one thing that you kind of need to do occasionally in Arena, is there are quite a few options that can hit uh, specifically the back slot. And because of this, you normally want to have a backline tank and not necessarily always put your best option in last. In the case of something like a zero attack, even though this can backline tank, you normally don't want to put a zero attack in last because then you don't have any damage um, at a certain point. So in this particular situation, we actually do want to try putting Ballet in last, which means we probably want to go either Dire Wolf or Glade, uh, Glade Waden. Uh, Gla Glade Warden? <laughs> So right here, uh, we're most likely going to want to go Direwolf. Uh, while he is a lot better with his traits, he does still do quite a bit without them. He ends up entangling and Hunter's Mark the first slot, which is already insane. It will make their attack do zero for some duration while allowing your attacks to do double damage. Uh, it also gets to pressure a little bit of damage, so it might be able to secure a kill. And on top of all that, if there's a bunch of green on the board, if you get lucky, it'll automatic extra turn. And it's pretty good value for what it is. So this is actually a pretty uh, perfect draft. Or not perfect, but, you know, usable. Uh, it's enough to uh, definitely get us our win here. So uh, right here, even though... Um, or never mind, it doesn't have higher attack. Though you don't always want to put in an attack order. A lot of these that we are doing are kind of in attack order because, you know, he's going to be gaining attack. So he's basically attack order right now. However, um, like we don't want to put Dire Wolf in last here. The main reason for this is his durability is really low. And if the enemy has any amount of back hitting, it's going to kill it in two hits. You normally want to put your worst troop uh, more often not in last. Which is a little bit weirder than how you would normally draft a team, uh, because generally how Gems of War draft or team building is normally composed is you want to put your best in third slot 
and your worse and last. However, that's not always the way you do it in um, in Arena. Uh, it really depends on your team. However, you normally want to put one of your tankier units in last that isn't that good, so you can backline tank with it. And have your best in second more often than not. Uh, the main reason for this is your best troop most likely also has pretty decent attack stats overall. Uh, as most of the good ones do, generally speaking. Because they're generally either epic or ultra rare rarity. Your best option normally on your team. And because of this, they naturally have a higher attack compared to things like our common and... Um, our, well, the epics. <laughs> this epic's a bad example because he's actually a really high durability, low attack one. But generally speaking, your... Um, Higher rarity stuff tends to have higher attack more often than not, which leads to them wanting to be morphed towards your front anyways, as attack pressure or skull pressure is really important in Arena, as it makes a lot more of your overall damage compared to a standard mode. So this would basically be our team. Tome Knight would be gaining barrier and gaining a bunch of stats, works very similar to how the Summer thing would. Uh, Trickster ends up doing a bunch of explosions while being able to swap the enemy team. Dire Wolf is kind of here trying to stay safe in the statistically safest location anywhere in Gems of War, which is the third slot, and because he's the lowest durability, nice safe spot to kind of have him just sitting around, and that's still applicable to Arena as well, third slot being the safest. And he's kind of just here to keep uh, entangling and Hunter's Mark and synergize pretty well, be able to get one shot with Tome Knight. And Balel is kind of just here to exist to tank. Uh, he was definitely our worst draft to such a degree that we uh, almost wanted to repick immediately. However, this would be perfectly fine to run through the entire arena with if you wanted to. So we'll go and draft again. And uh, we'll do two more. Uh, one more we'll just draft, and the last one we'll do draft, and then do one battle with it. So, right here, I'm um, probably already tempted to take Water Elemental. I know that this thing has a full AoE. Uh, stun is not useful in uh, Arena. However, anything that can do damage to everything simultaneously, because Submerge uh, being very rare in Arena overall, uh, makes it a pretty decent damage. It's going to be doing 28 damage for 13 mana cost, assuming the entire enemy team is still alive. Uh, I'm not sure if that's 6 when it doesn't have 10%, but it does have 10% this week due to being a Bright Forest troop, so that's always an extra plus. Um, generally, anything that's super high RNG, unless it's a really over-the-top good ability, you don't tend to want to really be using it. Uh, this is one of the rare exceptions, though, as he's actually not too bad. He either gets an okay AoE, which would be weaker than Water Elemental, or reducing their attack by almost half, at least in Arena standards, because 5 attack's pretty solid, or 5 explosions which um is okay an extra turn in the five explosions uh, for that mana cost not the greatest but uh the biggest thing that's holding him back is his inconsistency so in this situation we'd rather just have a water elemental uh we can also end up going for this for backup summon um which could be worthwhile a damage poke in the backup summon uh, we saw how well in that one battle that we did how good uh backup summon worked however in this particular situation i am definitely considering the water elemental here so right here uh, now that we picked a damage option uh one thing that we haven't done is a super offense build um it's riskier to build this way, but you can generally get quicker arena wins, and uh, based on what we have as a draft, I kind of want to do that. We have an option of Sister of Shadows. Ideally, with your second draft, you want to have no mana conflict with what you already drafted for your epic. This isn't required, but generally speaking, your epic and ultra rare, well, not always, will normally be your best options on your team. So if you have no mana conflict between the two of them and then have two other things for your other two slots, uh, you can end up already having a pretty good composition just off of that and simply depend on those two troops to win out the entirety of Arena, which is one way that you can end up winning Arena. This deals some damage to the uh, weakest two enemies, and if the enemy dies, it gains an extra turn. So now we have something that will set up the kill, and then something that cleans up the kill while getting an extra turn for it. So we're going to take this. Uh, now we want to just double check what we're missing, and as you can see, we're missing yellow and green. Oddly enough, we actually have a yellow-green option, and it's a man accumulator, so we probably want to pick this up. It knocks out an enemy to the back and then explodes two of their uh, mana colors. Let me double check his attack stat because I'm almost considering using it first. Even though we have two that have uh, seven, I do kind of want to keep our main core team alive if we can. Uh, this one ends up uh, being even more damage. We want to go down that route, do some damage to the two random enemies, and then inflict a random stats effect on each of them. And if one does this fairy fire or even just the damage in general, it might be enough for Sister to clean up. It's kind of like the Water Elemental for three less mana, but it's going to be hitting two less things just without the stats effects. Or, or with stats effects, I should say. Um... So that one is worth considering. This one's not really going to do anything for us. However, just for the sake of covering everything, just to give us really high flexibility with whatever we pick for our common, I'm actually going to take the Ridge back here. It also has a bit of a knockback thing, so if any, of the, if they have a high skull attack up front, uh, we can end up just moving them. So one thing that's actually pretty good uh, here is anything that has a really low divisible by three mana cost. Generally, when you're uh, there's no banners in Arena, so as you're accumulating mana in Arena, you're going to be gaining it about three at a time. So something like... Um, 
a exact six mana cost or three mana costs like uh, a peasant uh really really good in arena um so if you get a red surge which uh, it does take your surge chance which if you're in late game is probably around the 60 something percent chance um even uh, just kind of in mid game you can get uh, like over 50 percent so you're more than half the time going to be hitting a mana surge on red uh generally speaking so um, half the time he's going to be gaining full mana. And while this doesn't seem like much, it's just, oh, it's just a single damage poke. Uh, it's actually very useful. Um, it, it's just a nice damage poke. Uh, the amount of mana cost to um, mana ratio, pretty good. Um, this works really, really good with uh, the Sister of Shadows as well, even though they do share color. This does allow you to set up into the kill. And overall, definitely going to be the thing we'd end up taking here. So this will end up being our team. A little bit towards the higher attack side, you do normally want to have some amount of uh, tankiness. So uh, right here, we're going to go and um, there's a couple different ways we could end up doing this. Uh, oddly enough, what I actually want to do is Warder Elemental to first slot. This might seem like a bit of a weird option to go for. Um, but the main reason for this is we actually want to go and um, we, we don't need all... We, we need at least something in first slot that's going to have a high attack pressure. Uh, you almost always, always, always want something at least eight attack or higher in first slot. There are some few rare exceptions. Like one of the drafts we just did had a seven attack, but it almost like more than doubles the attack when it actually casts. Um, so once it gets to that point, you know, it's hitting like crazy. However, um, you normally want to make sure you at least have a eight or higher, more often than not, as your first slot for an arena draft. Um, this will end up making it so you can end up pressuring with skulls. And while this isn't required, it um, can definitely help end up securing a lot of damage. It's also pretty useful in this particular situation because as we get more damage, we'll be able to go kill secure. Uh, there are two different ways. Even though I was mentioning you would kind of want a backline tank, uh, losing Musketeer isn't going to be the end of the world in this kind of team. So if we want to, we can actually end up having it in this order. If we want the most offensive order as possible, we could actually go in this order, which is another option we can end up doing, uh, which, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, kind of goes into the whole epic into ultra rare thing, where you kind of just put both of them up front and just use it as your entirety of your team. Um, so there's either this way that you can end up building it or going the more uh, defensive route, uh, which would be something like this. Uh, however, I, I guess we would end up doing it kind of more like uh, this then. So this is probably the most offensive you can end up running the team. This runs us with a backline tank. Um, so in case they have like a super offensive backline, we don't need to worry about a death back there. Uh, we have our two highest rarity stuff up front that both have a nine attack value. And uh, we have our cleaner into the other one. So basically what we do here is cast water elemental. Ideally, uh, at least one of them would be in kill range. So we then cast sister of shadows. And then at that point, another one would be in kill range. So we're mostly just looking for a second sister of shadows with musketeer clearing up whatever's left. If these two happen to die and the ridge is could be holding down our back line uh, to his name. Kind of funny. Ridge back in the back. And you can also knock out an enemy to the back if we happen to have a weird format. Like, let's say they have something really uh, absurd up front. Let's say something like with that gains barrier. Like, let's say the one on our previous draft and he got like 20 attack, 20 armor, um, you know, has barrier up. We can simply just knock the enemy to the back and while still getting mana accumulation, then we can deal with them last. Uh, so we can kill out all the weaker remaining team and then just deal with it from there. So we'd end up working out pretty well. Anyways, let's go do one last draft, and uh, while I haven't really been utilizing it, you do get repick, and even if you're not going to be utilizing those repicks, you can just spam repick. Uh, you get one for free. I think it costs like a thousand to go into arena, though you do get one single repick for free. So let's say we didn't want any of these, because even just like, looking at these, I kind of don't really want them. So let's say we don't want any of these. We end up drafting this team, and it's like, oh, I don't really want it that much. It, well, it wasn't that good, though I rather ironically, this team actually could win. <laughs> But let's say uh, we didn't like it. We could definitely draft something better. Uh, you do get one free reroll. So if you do this twice, you won't be able to. So if I do this again, uh, we will have to go and spend uh, a little bit. So if we end up doing this again, you might notice another reroll doesn't come out. You'd have to retire. This isn't too big a deal. You're only losing like about 700-ish uh, gold. Or it depends on your gold bonus. But you're only losing like several hundred gold, which is pretty much nothing. But you do get that one free reroll. And you can just keep rerolling over and over again, even without the free reroll, to uh, try to get a good draft. So let's go for one last draft here. So, Terror Wyvern gains a bunch of attack and armor, which anything that can gain attack while gaining durability, pretty good. Generally, you'll also want to be gaining barrier, but that's fine. He already has pretty decent base stats. He also gets to explode three, so we're definitely going for this. I don't even really need to see the other options. Gob Trumper, if we had absolutely nothing, could be okay. Obviously, goblins are pretty annoying. However, there's no consistency on if the enemy would or would not have it, so if they don't have it, it's um, not going to help you much. So right here, uh, we actually got a really good barrier option, one of the best in the entire game, though you might notice he has a really bad mana conflict with us. With us. Um, this is a situation where it is such a good option 
that even mana conflict may still make us want to get it. So he destroys an X shape, which is a lot of mana accumulation, a lot of weird board control you can end up doing. But it also gains a barrier per uh, yellow that we end up destroying for all of our allies. So this can end up being a lot of mana accumulation overall uh, for every single yellow that we end up hitting. And if you end up hitting at least four, you're going to guarantee barrier your entire team. If there's already some barriers on your team and you try doing it again, let's say he goes for three barriers uh, the first time by hitting three yellows and then he does uh, two. Uh, those two are not going to guarantee hit the one remaining one that you have left. Uh, the main reason for this is it randomly chooses every single time. However, as long as there's four, it'll automatically hit each of them once. So it won't ever repeat them if you're doing it per cast. But if you're doing a cast after having already done any amount of barrier accumulation, even if it's from himself, he can end up hitting them on things that already have barrier. So if he does like two, it'll always hit two of them. If he hits three, it'll always hit three. If he does four, it'll always hit all of them. Or, you know, your entire team will get barriered. However, if you already have those barriers down and you're hitting two when you only need one thing left with barrier, it can still barrier things that already have barrier, which of course would waste the barrier. <laughs> Anyways, um, but he is so good that he's potentially worth considering. The other one that's kind of worth getting here is Dragon Turtle. He ends up dealing some damage to the first enemy and this emerges itself. This could be pretty good if they have an AoE option. Overall, pretty tanky. He'd be a great last slot troop. And uh, even though I really want to pick Dragonian Monk here, um, because he is really, really good, uh, we are going to have to go based on colors. And uh, if you can ever get a draft where you have a four color contrast off your first two picks, it is normally the way you want to go. And uh, we that did end up going that way this time around. So we know for sure we want to run Terra Weaver in first slot. Uh, we know for sure we want to run Dragon Turtle probably in last. So with that being said, uh, Fire Lizard's looking pretty good right about now. Uh, Archon Statue can be an okay first slot here, deal some damage to the strongest enemy, and if they're wounded, it does some extra. So if he's already damaged there and you can kind of get him proc down, he'll be doing a pretty substantial amount of damage. Uh, almost enough to one-shot a lot of things in Arena, though he does automatically hit strongest, so might not necessarily be one-shotting, or at least weaken him down a lot. But in this situation, we do want to go for Fire Lizard. Even though we're using every single one of these colors already, uh, every single draft we have is already going to be doing that, so uh, that's not going to be too relevant for us in this situation but he's a man accumulator uh, we always want to make sure you have at least one thing that can end up doing man accumulator uh, sometimes you can end up doing it off of already good options so he'll be doing it however you don't just want to depend on one single one in case it does end up dying uh, especially if that's the core win condition so uh, we are going to end up picking this and then we just need one more draft so here you might think oh spider knight he's using a different color we might want to pick it however we do have access to rock worm which is kind of interesting um, he ends up creating a bunch of uh, mana while also hitting back slot back slots hitting is pretty good in a arena is a mechanic not really used too much in the main state of the game other than maybe like assassin hero class uh, that can insta kill last slot uh, there are very few good options in the main game where you use back hitting troops as the strategy isn't really that needed however in arena it's definitely something you always have to consider uh, going into any battle uh, the main reason for this is um there's a lot of things that hit pretty hard relative to total durability like this thing's probably three shotting almost everything in arena and he has a decent capability to recast his ability at least once due to how many browns he'll be creating so it's something pretty devastating that you always have to be keeping uh, tabs on we can end up going for this just for a little bit more mana coverage it definitely seems kind of tempting but from an overall just pressure standpoint uh especially given that we're putting our other brown in first slot i actually do want to go rock room here as weird as that may seem so let's go end this uh stream or this uh video with uh, almost seems like a stream of how long it's going gosh but uh let's go end this video with one uh little team build showing it so this will be the order that we end up running with um dragon turtle on the back as i mentioned rock worm basically as our win condition uh of course we're putting him in third slot which is the safest spot you could ever put a troop in pretty much any context in gems of war and we want to make sure our rock worm doesn't die because worst comes to worst he can solo the entire battle if we get if he gets lucky enough uh terror worm is obviously going to be our main build and is basically the whole team in its entirety uh it is under the category of auto win uh, troops and that will basically uh, even as boost ratio boost ratio we haven't seen any ultra crazy boost ratio ones in our drafts quite yet but there's some that are pretty decent you always want to be keeping tabs on them so right here uh, for how many skulls there are he's gaining two to one for how much attack and armor he gains so let's say there's four skulls on the board he's going to be gaining two additional total uh, attack and armor so a little bit of a buff not as crazy as that one we saw earlier with that one yellow blue that could gain like uh, doubling its amount but uh, still pretty good with the fact that it ends up doing it with a bunch of explosion it doesn't have barrier but it makes up for it with base stats which is pretty nice anyways let's go into this battle i believe that's exactly how we want to run it order wise and uh, let's actually go run through it actually we might as well go run through the whole thing show the full thing we haven't actually done a single full run so uh i probably won't be doing this in our later stream today so uh because we're probably gonna be focusing on trying to do those new mimics oh well, not super new but you know we're still hunting for them so uh might as well go for a full arena run here as this team's gonna be perfectly fine to do it within a somewhat decent amount of time so while our color contrast isn't really too good on our team the overall composition of it is uh, going to be pretty solid. So we're going to take a skull here. We didn't end up needing the mana because I already had full. It did end up mana draining us there, though, so that's a bit of a liability. 
Uh, we do not have a drop for that, so we aren't going to be able to Cascade. We can go for a red to green. It's going to get Last Lock guaranteed to full, even if neither Surge. Uh, this will also give us a little bit extra yellow, so you know what? I actually convinced myself to go get it, so we will go for it. It's a lot of mana, so it was worth going for in that particular situation. We have enough to kill the one. Um, I guess we end up going for it then. He does have that little bit of mana drain, and he's probably going to hit it on the thing that I don't want it to hit on. Oh, good. It didn't. Never mind. Oh, never mind. It only hits on the last one. I'm sorry. So we're going to end up doing that. That's a cat's if I was considering getting it. As you can see, someone ended up grabbing it and got it for its really high attack value. Um, which, uh, of course, uh, pretty decent. Uh, 11 attack. That's definitely a pretty high attack value to end up having. And we end up killing without even needing the Fire Lizard. Uh, the Fire Lizard does end up applying a burn as well, which is really devastating in Arena. Uh, we haven't really had many Stas Effect related teams that we've been kind of showing here. However, do keep in mind that Stas Effects are even stronger in Arena compared to normal, except for Curse and Stun. Curse and Stun's overall worse because you generally don't have to worry about those mechanics like ever in Arena, more often than not. Like, they're barely ever used, even though they're kind of decent outside the fact. So things that are normally pretty strong, like Freeze, Curse, uh, Stun, uh, way less effective in Arena, even though they can be used ever so occasionally for some things. However, the ones that are really, really good in Arena are things like Poison, Bleed, Burn, anything that can do damage over time, because uh, damage over times are all static currently within this game, so none of them do based on percent or anything like that. So the lower your stats, the more effective those things are, and obviously in Arena you have very, very, very low stats, uh, which makes all those effects uh, much stronger than they would uh, normally be. So right there, we have the brown leaking into the other thing. One of the other reasons for getting Rockworm, because we know we're using this as our core troop on the team, and because we're likely going to be taking a lot of mana for our core troop, uh, we're going to have a lot of bleeding of the uh, manas uh, that will leak into other stuff, so we can end up having that in order to feed into uh, other troops. So we're unfortunately not able to get a buff there, though we have still plenty of win conditions on this team that are going to make that not too big of a liability. So right here, you may notice we have a brown extra turn. However, we don't actually want to swipe for it. Uh, we're about to create brown mana, so we actually want to leave it there to keep our tur extra turn potential higher. Uh, right here, we could even go for it again or opt for a skull. However, I'm just going to keep going for our looping. So we're going to go for this. As you can see, we got an extra turn from the browns we kept there. And this is basically why we drafted Rockworm. It's a good kind of backup plan if we kind of have a stickier situation, especially if they don't have any brown troops remaining on their team. Uh, we can go a little bit crazier with it because we don't have to worry about any kind of backfiring of the ability. I did not nice some brown there. Probably shouldn't have actually. It's kind of a natural habit to try to get as many cascaded as possible. But that was one situa situation where we might not necessarily have wanted to go for it. Uh, right here, he could actually win. This is a little bit sketchy. Hopefully we'll be able to get a brown extra turn. We do miss, so we are going to need a little bit extra damage here, but he's already in kill range. Might look like we're kind of almost dying here, though we're still in a really safe position. Uh, we made sure to keep our uh, backline tank there. Uh, we did put one of our tankies option that isn't our main win condition in first slot. And uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with those buffers, even though uh, once he starts getting buffed, he is auto win. Um, there are some situations where, you know, that's not going to happen. So if we're in a super dire situation, let's say we lost there, um, hypothetically. I should, could have probably shown it in the other screen. But let's say hypothetically we lost there. One thing that we might want to do to adjust our team is put our super tank, our dragon turtle, into first slot. And then allow this guy to be in second slot. This will give him time without blocking any of his manas to start getting buffed. Which will lead to a very safe win. It's going to be a lot slower doing it that way. But if you really wanted to make sure you did not lose, you can end up opting for the safer strategy. Now, we won't be doing that here. Uh, since we didn't end up actually losing or anything. But uh, it is worth considering if you uh, end up needing to shift into a safer option. So right here, uh, we're probably going to get our first burn down. So this will randomly burn whatever it touches. Burn is ridiculously strong in Arena. Uh, probably the best mechanic overall because it's 3 damage per turn. And while in the main game, that's uh, pretty pitiful more often than not. Uh, in something like Arena, it hits for an absurd amount and will generally kill anything that ever gets touched with burn. Especially since a lot of things that do burn are already doing some extra damage on top of that. They're, most things that burn don't only burn. They're also doing something else with that burn. Uh, you normally damage, which uh, can end up leading to quite a bit of value. As you can see there, he was already kind of chipped down for the burn, and even if we didn't get the skull there, he probably would have died in two turns as long as he didn't get the cleanse there. So yeah, if we wanted to go for the safer option, we could basically just drag the dragon turtle all the way up, and then boom, we got a safer team. So that's pretty much all we'd have to do to be able to get a safer option onto our team. And uh, you may notice with this team that we do have like a double leak system for this as well. Uh, we don't really have it for yellow, but Whenever we take brown, we have something that excess brown will go into. And whenever we take uh, red, we'll have something that excess red can go into. Which ends up working out pretty well. We don't want to put our rockworm in front of this thing, though. Uh, mostly because rockworm would be a very bad first slot. We're mostly keeping him as our backup plan to make sure we don't lose. And just kind of having him in a nice safe spot where uh, if he needs to automatically win, he can. 
uh, if he feels like doing so. Uh, that's something to consider with anything that can end up gem spawning. Um, if, if you can get lucky enough with them, they can just kind of go crazy. And if they can do gem spawning while gaining, you know, like an attack durability kind of thing, uh, while, or while just pressuring a lot of damage, they are worth considering putting into a pretty safe spot like third slot to try to just auto win off of them. So we're in a bit of a ske sketchy situation here. Uh, we're up against a... Um, Oh, uh, uh, never mind. We end up killing him there. Uh, but I was going to say, he has 9 attack to our 9 durability. So there's a chance we end up losing our first slot again. However, it does look like we killed him uh, preemptively in enough time that we're pretty much good to go. So uh, he's going to poke us. We could still end up dying with this thing, though we're at a point where every single skull also kills him. He also ended up entangling. Good job, AI. <laughs> he also entangled something that was pretty pointless. So at this point, every skull we take just will instantly kill. And uh, for whatever reason, he really does not want to attack the one thing he should be entangling. But uh, that's good for us, so we'll just keep taking stuff from the board. Uh, maybe gain a little bit more durability, though we are outside of one-shot range. He doesn't really have any way to damage us right now. He has a lot of durability-related stuff, but uh, it shouldn't really matter too much. He does gain barrier here, um, so one thing we actually want to do is explode. As long as you do at least one damage to a barrier, it will get rid of his barrier. So even though we only exploded him for like one damage or so there, um, still enough to get through. I should have taken the yellow to red there. Not too big a deal, though. Um, I think we can actually kill just off of this because we're going to apply a burn and then he just gets chipped down and worst comes to worst We could pretty much just wait unless he gets uh, the cleanse there um, This is something you normally wouldn't do but I'm actually going to go and uh, take this and try for a skull Oh, no, no, never mind. That won't align. Never mind. Um I was going to take a red. I, I thought we were going to be able to have a skull sky chance. Oh, no He ends up getting it though from luck. Oh gosh um, Because I was going to go for the skull sky to kind of set up into uh, a quicker poke if we could get lucky but he's going to die to burn. Actually, I should have just let him die to burn. <laughs> but uh, there's a good chance he was going to. Of course, he could cleanse it. It doesn't stay on forever. Poison does, which is why poison's actually so good in Arena. But um, something like burn and every other stats effect in the game does not. Anyways, let's go do one last battle just to kind of go through it. And then we get to see the other little offer thing and everything. But yeah, that's pretty much Arena. If you guys still have any other questions or anything you want me to go over it with it, do let me know. Uh, it's not a mode I cover too, too much. We have pulled it in the past, and it seems like only around like half pe of people really run Arena these days. Um, it is a mode I would advise playing, though. It's a lot of fun. You learn a lot of weird strategy and use a lot of quirky teams that you would pretty much never use on any other circumstance. I do personally find the Arena mode to be enjoyable. I just wish the loot for it overall was a bit more enticing compared to some other areas. Because if you compare it to something like a Vault event or even almost anything else in the game, like even other weekend events, um, its payout is pretty overall not the greatest. It's good if you're looking to like secure a pet, like we were mentioning earlier, or just wanted a bit more keys for slightly cheaper, or if you really were like desperate for more Imperials or for War Coins or something. Like in those situations, they're okay. But more often than not, the payouts, uh, definitely not the greatest. So unfortunately, we did not hit the Doom Skull there. We did land extra turns, so that's nice. Uh, we are going to take the Doom Skull poke there, which is already enough to kill. Basically, every Skull we do here will be able to kill, uh, with the one exception of the one literally as soon as I say that, because he's actually using the highest durability troop in the entire game, uh, the Fortress Gates. Uh, to this day, it is still the highest durability, if I'm not mistaken, even more so than any Mythic. I really hope we get a zero attack Mythic at some point. I really want to see what on earth they'll do with it, if they do. Uh, but Fortress Gate, as far as just pure base stats, has the highest HP armor combination in the entire game, which is kind of interesting. You normally never use it on your team because you normally use that one Ogress that is green-blue that 100% summons it when it dies. So you get a good man accumulator, and then if it dies, it becomes that tank. Um, so if you're going to be using that, you generally just use her instead if you want to use that mechanic. However, um, in Arena, it can be okay uh, if you really want, like, an ultra tank. I normally wouldn't advise drafting it, but if you really needed a uh, tank somewhere on your team... Um, the biggest issue with the zero attacks in Arena, though, is they actually have zero attacks. Uh, normally, they wouldn't in normal battles. They would have, um, you know, however many kingdom upgrades you have and all the other stats. However, in Arena, because there's none of those stats, because you're not getting any of those stats, it quite literally has zero. <laughs> Which is always funny to say. Anyways, can we get a skull here? Will it let me get a skull win? Yes, it will. There we go. Didn't even need the other one. And uh, there we go. And of course, uh, as per usual, as the reward screen uh, would suggest, whenever you get a full arena run, uh, we will get our Valor here uh, going towards the event, if there's an event currently active for it, uh, which happens about once every six weeks or so. At least in the current state of the game, we get all of our trophies here, which is actually a pretty decent amount of trophies. Not the greatest, but it's it's a decent handful. And uh, most importantly, the best thing, the offer. So right here, unfortunately, we did get another bad roll here. Uh, any of the underworld treasure is another category that you generally don't want to be uh, ever getting here. They're too expensive for what they are. And uh, even at a 10% discount, uh, not worth it. 
But oh, we already went over a little bit earlier some of the ones that are, are a bit more worth it. The war coins, the pet ones, uh, whenever they do occur. The ones that is for 400 gems or 360 in that context that gives you a bunch of gem keys and event keys. If you don't have more event keys than you know what to do with, it's pretty good to get uh, because the overall value for it, I think saving like 40, 50, 60 gems is pretty high. Uh, the overall amount of uh, gem saving between uh, buying the keys directly and um, uh, war coins if you happen to need them, stuff like that, imperials. But anyways, guys, that will wrap it up for Arena. If you still have any other questions, as I mentioned, definitely leave it in the comment section below. Uh, I would say the teams would be below as well uh, in the description. However, uh, not really any way to go over teams. <laughs> but uh, I hope that like general overall strategy um, kind of gave you an idea of how to play Arena. It's um, definitely a mode worth trying out. I personally enjoy it a lot. I just wish the payout was better. I personally uh, going to be skipping it a lot most weeks, so I figured we'd do a guide on it since uh, probably not going to be streaming it. This kind of is our uh, content for uh, Arena this week overall, but it's a fun mode. Uh, you get to do some really quirky strategies that you normally don't get to, and overall, I would uh, advise at least trying it some if you haven't tried it for a while. If nothing else, at least do it for those three per day during the arena event, and you can end up getting those offers while also getting some val uh, some uh, arena of valor progress, which is how I normally end up doing it. Uh, though I'm going to be hunting those mimics this time around. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Best of luck with arena if you're going to be doing it, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye, everyone, and thanks for watching.